I remember the first time I went into my boss's office and I was getting a promotion. So I'm sitting there and I find out I'm gonna manage a bunch of other speakers and trainers. And most of them are like 15 years older than me. And I was kind of surprised, but I also knew like I have the skill set and the administrative skills to do this. So this is gonna be my job. And what the hell am I doing? So maybe you're in that spot where you're like, Cool, I got a promotion. Let's go get drinks and celebrate. What the hell am I doing? That's totally normal. I get it. I'm gonna teach you three skills that you're gonna wanna have as a young leader that will dramatically help you lead other people. Here's the first one. You're gonna wanna take some time and learn about how each generation thinks about authority and leadership. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown. The people that are the oldest in your office, the most experienced, don't call them old people, that's kinda of rude, okay? <laughs> but the people that have that are old, uh, those people <laughs> that have been around that were raised a long time ago, like post-World War II era, this is how they grew up in childhood. Their parents told them to be seen and not heard. They, men were worried about being drafted to the Vietnam War, which like to date was one of the worst wars that America got involved with. Basically all the veterans, you know, when you see like Vietnam vet stuff, that's because the vets went over and uh, nobody, Americans didn't want to be in the war. And then when they came back, they got booed. So they got drafted over there and it sucked. And then they came back and everybody booed them. So basically boomers have been through the ringer through their childhood and growing up. And they're used to an authority that says, you don't wanna do it, too freaking bad, you're going over to Vietnam, right? Or you don't wanna do it, I'm gonna paddle you. That We used to have corporal punishment in schools, so principals and teachers could paddle kids. Can you imagine growing up in a time like that? So a boomer, when they think of authority, they automatically think of somebody who is older than them, who has physical power and might to make them do what they don't even wanna do. Can you imagine living in that time and growing up that way? So if you're younger in an office and you're leading a boomer, know that they're used to respectful leadership. They're used to um, authority. They have a high view of authority and you, you might be kind of a casual person, you might wanna buddy up to them, and they really wanna know that you respect them. They, don't, they might not wanna tell you about like their weekend plans. They wanna know that you value their wisdom and their, and their life experiences and that you're gonna utilize all their wisdom as you do this project or as you work together. You're gonna to really listen to them because they have way more experience than you. It's really important that they know that. So when you think about understanding the different groups of people, that's an important piece to know. That's where boomers kind of sit. And then you've got Gen Xers. Gen Xers, they're the kind of next group that grew up uh, probably before you did. They grew up in the 60s and 70s. And when they were growing up, our school system was a little rough around the edges. And the other piece is that typically both of their parents were working for the first time. And we didn't have daycare yet. So basically, can you imagine like a second grader coming home from school, getting off the bus, going home and making their own macaroni and cheese and hot dogs on the stove, like a second grader. Can you imagine that? That's how they grew up. So they're wildly, um, they're, they're basically wildly independent. They are used to getting shit done. They're pragmatic, they're gonna get shit done. And uh, they also don't expect like deep, deep relational ties. They'd be great to have at work, but they're, also there because they know there's a job that needs to get done. And you've got millennials. You're, you might be a millennial. You might. This might be the first time that you've gotten a promotion. We grew up in the 80s and 90s when we were told that like going to college is the key. Go to college, you're gonna get an awesome career path going. You're gonna have healthcare, you're gonna have a 401k. You're gonna jump that. You're, you don't need to have a ton of leadership experience because college and education is gonna help you jump ahead, right? So here's the thing. We all, and I'm a millennial, I'm 35. I was born in 1984. We all think that, hey, we're gonna get ahead quick because we went to college. But to boomers and Gen Xers, they tend to think that we are cocky SOBs. <laughs> they tend to think that because we're like, we should get ahead, we went to college. Uh, that kind of feels gross to them. So just know that each generation sees leadership different when you're working with a Gen Xer. Again, if you're working, really, it's a general rule. If you're working with anybody with more experience than you, put, put that out there. Hey, Bill, hey, Sharon. I know you have more experience than me. I wanna make sure that we, we use your wisdom and your experience as much as we can on this project. So you wanna make sure to honor them and respect them in that way. Okay, that's the first skill that you're gonna to wanna to have, this knowledge that different generations in the US, you guys know all the memes, we're gonna put some up, right?
reason that they're so funny is there's an element of them that's kind of true. And it's good for you to know how to talk and lead other generations, truly. Okay, so that's the first skill that you're just gonna wanna be mindful of. It's kind of weird when you're leading somebody who's older than you. I've done it, it's tough, it's tough. The second skill that you're gonna wanna have is to be able to communicate clearly in person, especially when it comes to conflict. Because if you're like me, we grew up in a time when we handled our conflicts on American America Online, AOL. Is that what it's called, America Online? Yeah, AOL. Did you have an AOL account, mister? Oh, oh my little dosh dosh. Okay, um, but we, as I'm a millennial, we as millennials, we didn't always learn how to handle conflict. Doesn't it make you nervous to think about how to tell somebody that they haven't met your expectations? Oh, that's so awkward. Ugh. So as a leader, you're gonna wanna learn, how do I have <laughs> in true in-person communication? Here's a couple things to be thinking about when you're talking to somebody in person. Make sure that you are turned and facing them, that your whole body, your shoulders, your hips, your toes are facing that person that helps them feel heard. Then you also wanna make sure to make eye contact. I know it feels a little intimidating, intimidating and weird, but people really need to see that you're listening and they have your eyes. That means you can't be on your phone. When you're leading somebody and they come in your office, put your phone in a drawer if you have to. Get rid of it so you can actually talk to somebody face to face. You actually wanna make sure too, as a leader, when it comes to being a clear communicator, you wanna make sure that you have exactly planned out in your head what you want to say. The worst thing is to be shooting from the hip and making shit up on the spot when your team is in front of you. Come with an agenda in place, come with a plan in place, make sure that everybody um, expects that from you and that they bring their thoughts to the table too, but clear communication is so important. Once you're a leader, people don't give you the same slack. They expect you to be an organized communicator that you bring your ideas clearly to the table. And if you have an issue and you need to work it out with an employee, first that you believe the best and you truly like work through that yourself, even if you're super pissed off, you believe the best, like somebody misses a deadline and they always miss a deadline. And you're like, are you freaking kidding me? Now we all look dumb. Why did you do that? And you get all up in your head and you get frustrated. You wanna be able to, as a leader, be able to work through that yourself and then call them in and say, hey, I noticed that we didn't hit this deadline that we thought we would. Um, what happened on your end that made that hard to do? Not, why are you such an idiot? Get your job done. <laughs> but really, help me understand what happened so we can get all those barriers out of the way. You wanna be able to make sure to handle conflict in a way that doesn't feel personal with the people that you work with. Okay, so if you are a young leader and you're starting out, first skill, understand all the different generations. You can go to my website and get a crash course on all of that and get under my free tools. Take them and run with them. You'll see what each generation is like and what they want from you. The second thing we talked about is communicating clearly in person, especially when there's a conflict. Here's the third one, managing your mental health. Millennials, we are the most depressed and anxious generation to date. To date, we're really struggling with um, keeping our mental health at a level where we can work regularly. So it's so important as a leader that you take care of yourself. I know for me, that means every week I see a therapist, I have a coach on my team, I go to the gym, I have a personal trainer, I make sure I'm eating healthy, I try not to take in like dark, media, you know, or like just sad shit all the time. I really work to keep people in my life that inspire me. Building, what I'm really talking about right now is building a life team. If you're leading other people, you will need a team of people around you to keep you up and moving and strong. And think about for you, what areas do I tend to dip in? I know for me, it's totally nutrition. I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna eat pizza tonight. Okay, it's gonna happen. And I've planned my whole day around that, but all I had to say, um, <laughs> I plan my whole day to eat pizza tonight. But really, when I'm stressed, I tend to eat a shit ton of sugar. Are you with me? So I have people on my team. I've had a nutrition coach and I have people around me that eat healthier so that I am thinking about how to take care of my body too. So here's the thing about a life team. If you're leading other people, you wanna have specialists who speak into and guide your life. Not just general mentors, like leadership mentors, but people who can really help you become a master of your body, your mind, your um, career, all your the skills that you need. You wanna have people on your team that can help build into you. Sometimes you're gonna have to pay them. 
Sometimes they may do it for um, just goodwill as a mentor, but don't be afraid to get a shit ton of support around you so that when you come into the office, you're not looking for support and encouragement. Because when you're a leader, no one's gonna do that, Maria. When you're leading everybody else, your job is to pour into them. So having a life team of people that pour into you and can build into you is key. It's so critical. If you need a therapist, if you're struggling, most of us, uh, the most anxious and depressed generation to date, you think we need therapy? Yeah, right? If you need a therapist, don't be ashamed. It's so important that you have exactly the people that can speak into and help you in the areas that you need help. There's nothing wrong with that. That's really healthy and good. But be thinking about maybe maybe you're feeling stressed lately about like your finances. You're like, well, I got this promotion, but I'm not really making more money. I'm just working more hours and I'm stressed out because I've got student loans and I want to buy a house and you're feeling all that. That's not something to talk about at work. Find for yourself a financial advisor that can speak into your life and help you come up with a plan in that area. Do you see what I'm saying though? You're gonna need support in all different areas of your life. And as a young leader, go find that. You might define most of it outside of work, but build a team of people around you that can encourage you. Okay, so if you just got a promotion and you're figuring out how to lead people, here's the things to remember. Understand the different generations you're leading, especially the ones that are older than you, because it's kind of weird to have authority over them. Number two, Learn how to communicate clearly in person, make eye contact, understand and get trained in how to deal with conflict resolution with people. Try not to take things personally when they go wrong. And number three, manage your own mental health. Build a tribe around you, a life team around you who can support you and make you strong so when you come into work, you can support and care for other people. I'm excited for you. Congratulations on getting that promotion. That's amazing. Keep doing your thing, take care of yourself first and everything else will work out.